Hello, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 10 of the H-Town Rundown. I'm Nicholas Steele. And I'm Gabe Graham. And, and we're, we're your hosts. hosts. In this edition, we'll be finishing our coverage of March Madness, taking a look at another food truck in town, Trap, the newest drama production, and catching up on all the student recognitions we have from the past two weeks, from Stuco to photography, FFA to FCLA, and all things Godwin Athletics. <laughs> like to begin today with a thank you. That's right, Gabriel David Graham. We'd like to start off by giving a special shout out to the HHS Prom Committee for doing an incredible job last Saturday night. We weren't even sure we would have to uh, have a prom, and I think everyone was grateful for the opportunity and even more so with the decorations and effort, considering the short timeline to prepare for the end of March when the announcement was made uh, that HHS could host a prom. Respectfully, I think I speak for everyone when I say it was super hot. <laughs> kind of like that grilled cheese that Luke let me have a bite of when they did their feature for one of the food trucks in Harrison. Let's go to Cole Clavey and Luke Lunsford with more on the grilled cheese. Today we had the privilege of interviewing Tiffany Hadley, the owner of the Bella Ella's grilled cheese food truck. Um, it's just been a passion of mine. I've always enjoyed cooking. I wanted to run my own business and spent years planning it, thinking about it, getting recipes together, testing products, and then uh, finally got a trailer, built it, and opened my business. Uh, our location is normally Camps Plants in Harrison, Arkansas. However, we do several events, and um, we always post on our Facebook, our weekly schedule. Our daily hours usually are uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sometimes we have dinners, and, and just depends on what all's going on. Probably the biggest seller would be the bed row, the number one. A lot of people like to start at the top. They work their way down through all the sandwiches sometimes. Um, but it's one of our, the one that has all the mac and chicken and vegetables, so it's a top seller. My personal favorite is the Cecil. It's our Greek uh, sandwich, and I like to add chicken to it. It's really good. We use top-of-the-line meats, bacon, cheeses, our breads. Everything comes in from our distributor, um, and then we make to order so you can have no onions no peppers whatever you want on it extra this and that then we cook to your order so it does take a minute um, we do everything we can to streamline our time but you're getting a fresh made to order product you know we're not drive through so <laughs> so yes you can customize i've seen it all so <laughs> hi i'm caitlin today i went to bella ellis to try some grilled cheese today i had the finnegan which is a classic grilled cheese but with a little bit of a twist because it had three cheeses on it. It was really great. It had pepper jack, cheddar, and provolone on it. <laughs> um, a few weeks ago, I went ahead and I tried the Cecil. It's kind of a Greek sandwich, and um, while I'm not a big fan of the olives on it, it was overall really great and had some good elements. Next time you're in the mood for some good food, go visit Bella Ella's at 1100 Business Highway, 65 located beside Camp's Plants or across from Neighborhood's Diner. You can also go online to the Bella Ellis Food Truck page on their Facebook to order custom sandwiches anytime you want. Our next feature comes from two of my personal favorite Gob TV anchors who tend to do everything sports. Yes, indeed. We finished our March Madness coverage with a breakdown of the championship game and the outcome of such an iconic matchup. Hello, and welcome back to our coverage of March Madness. Uh, we are now recording after the championship game, which I predicted to be Baylor and Gonzaga, which it was. Uh, the Zags, unfortunately, uh, an end came to their perfect season as they lost to Baylor uh, in a very convincing win for Baylor. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, it was just, it was not much of a game, like for the whole way through. Uh, Baylor handled Gonzaga the way they handled Arkansas. They got up early and they didn't look back. It was just, I mean, I don't know, everyone thought it was going to be a lot closer based on, you know, just the two best teams in college basketball, but Gonzaga just didn't show up. I mean, they're, th I mean they really lost on the boards, and they lost in the, in the three-point shooting game, and it just is not the outcome that they were looking for. 
Absolutely. I think it's important to note that UCLA and Baylor uh, came into the games against the Zags in two completely different ways, and that happened to be their two closest games of the season. UCLA, uh, they decided they weren't going to let the Zags beat them on transition, so they just did not go for rebounds. They threw up a shot and ran back. Baylor did quite the opposite. They fought for every rebound. They had almost double the rebounds the Zags had in the championship, which was a big source of the loss for the Zags. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, even though the Yazaka team as a whole didn't play well, Jalen Suggs, again, I mean, he didn't have a great first half, but he showed up, especially after, you know, giving them the win the first time. And there was a lot of future NBA talent on that floor, and it was at least good to see them get to play, at, even though it wasn't a good game. Absolutely. Uh, shout out Drew Timmy. Uh, I love you, even though you lost, you did great. I'm really looking forward to your draft preview, football. The Goblins showed out at A-State with students placing in more than five categories. We would like to give a special congratulations to those successful in competing. Here's a list of Harrison's very own winners at A-State Creative Digital Media Contest. Gob TV's Cole Clavey and Trey Ward took gold. In photography, there were many winners, including Claire Barger, Matthew Somers, Gabe Sandoval, Sidney Jones, Shelby Richardson, Autumn Wilson, Tristan Thompson, Gracie Head, Brenna Larson, Allison Pointer, Manny Wilson, and Chasey Hudson. Speaking of recent accomplishments by students at HHS, FFA with Miss Walker has made a run at their state competition for some pretty big titles. In veterinary science, they were the 2021 Arkansas FFA state champions and the 2021 Northwest District champions. Destiny Miller was high point individual and Abby Alds was third individual. In horse evaluations, they were the 2021 Arkansas FFA state champions and the Northwest District champions. Andrea Bird was high point individual and Gabby Roberts was fourth individual and Chloe Hubbard was fifth individual. In agriculture and mechanics, they placed seventh at the 2021 state contest and third in the Northwest District contest. In nursery and landscapes, they placed eighth in the 2021 state contest. Recently, our HHS student council won the position of AASC state office vice president and Addie Jones will serve that role. Here's the video that won them that title. On vocals is Zach Jimerson. Check this out. On the press. Spin that press, so that press. Will forever be that press. In the school student council, making change, making action. School spirit, raising money, serving others is my passion. I'm way too inclusive, everybody get involved. We got a place for you, so come join us in this song. Quiz bowl, choir, cheerleading, football. Suco is a place where everyone belongs. Honesty, loyalty, initiative, pride. Teamwork makes a dreamer, that's the motto we live by. I'm in Stuco. Serving, leading, exceeding. Got that spirit, blue and gold, we're bleeding. Yeah, you better show up to that meeting. We're repeating. I'm in Stuco. Serving, leading, exceeding. Got that spirit, blue and gold, we're bleeding. Yeah, you better show up to that meeting. We're repeating. Go gobs go, hear our victory cry. We love HHS, yeah we've got that goblin pride. Supporting our school is our number one ambition. Appreciating the students is our duty and our mission. We love all our teachers and our staff is the best. Making sure we're acing all our classes and our tests. All we do is win, everywhere, every day. As Jay always says, hashtag by school and NA. I'm in Stuco. Serving, leading, exceeding. Got that spirit, blue and gold, we're bleeding. Yeah, you better show up to that meeting. We're repeating. I'm in Stuco. Serving, leading, exceeding. Got that spirit, blue and gold, we're bleeding. Yeah, you better show up to that meeting. We're repeating. I'm in Stuco. Addie Jones also placed with her partner Katie Sims, earning gold at the FCCLA State Event National Programs in Action with their project Lead Like a Grandma. They just received their medals and will compete in the Nationals this summer. Moving on to sports, the Lady Goblin soccer team took down Green Forest and Prairie Grove this week. Facts, Gabe. The softball and baseball teams both took down Prairie Grove and the baseball team also took down Farmington this week. In track, there were a couple new school records broken. Claire Barger with a high jump of 5 feet and 5 inches and Alex Hill with a triple jump of 33 feet and 11 inches. It's insane, Gabe. Track didn't have the only school record, though. That is very true. Claire Barger also broke a state AAA record for the most goals scored in a soccer game with a double hat trick. She scored six goals alone over Shiloh Christian. Cheer tryouts are next week. Shay and Stella sat down with Coach Horton about this year's changes. Take it away, ladies. 
I don't think coaching is ever hard just because I love to do it. We are going to have a few changes though, so it might be more challenging um, time and paper wise. But as far as the coaching part, I love to do it so it's not even a job. Right now, um, Alicia Morris is going to come back and coach 7th and 8th grade and I will be helping her as we did two years ago. Um, so she's the head coach, I just help when they need it. For tryouts this year, last year we had to do virtual try tryouts, Alicia and I, um, we did score those tryouts where actually she and I are going to pick our teams again this year. But anything is going to be better than it was last year. I don't know that it's going to be hard. I think the challenges that we face in this upcoming season will not be anything near what we did last year, so I'm not even worried about that at all. We are actually going to have a ninth grade squad this year that will be its own entity. So they will be the junior varsity team and they'll cheer for ninth grade football and ninth grade basketball. So we will have our school squad, um, whatever that number might be, and they will all cheer for sideline, cheer for football and basketball. And then when it comes down to the competition team, I will take the most qualified number of kids that are able to perform and execute the routine to perfection. So that number might be 12, it might be 16, it might be 24. I don't know, I'll just have to wait and see when we get there competition cheer team. I just think that adds another aspect to the level of cheerleading. It gives the girls something to work for. We love cheering on Friday nights and we love cheering for basketball. However, I think that this will give the girls um, a new challenge to rise up to, help push them to their limits just a little bit longer. And so we're really looking forward to that. The high school cheer and the competitive cheer for high school I'm trying not to keep them separate. So we will have a competitive squad, but then if there are, there will be a few kids that we use for filling and back up. Somebody gets hurt or injured, or if they have COVID, those kids will step in and fill the shoes. So even though I only take a certain number on the mat for competition, all the other kids will actually know the routine and be able to perform the routine too. If you want to try out for cheer, please contact Christy Horton and good luck to all those trying out. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, the HHS Jazz Band will be performing at the Hot Air Balloon Festival. And if you aren't interested in music, there's always the option to see a drama production in the Fine Arts Center. Bryce Gilley has more on this production. It's Bryce Gilley from Begon TV. I'm at the Harrison High School Auditorium where the, theater, where the drama club is doing rehearsals. Trap is a psychological thriller uh, kind of deal. It has a little bit of a supernatural in it as well but it's about a small town in California um, where all of the bodies mysteriously fall into a coma and they, uh, they have all sort of friends, you know, forensic uh, experts and um, experts from all over the world come in and try to figure out why they've fallen into this coma all of a sudden while they're watching a show, um, a play, and they can't figure it out uh, till, of course, till the you know till the end they start to figure it out. But it does have a really neat um, supernatural element to it. There's the same thing has kind of kept happening uh, for years and years, and so there's that supernatural. Is it like a haunted theater sort of deal? Um, but it's also definitely like a psychological thriller because fear is um, a really huge factor in it. So they you know they discuss the psychology of fear um, and the psychology of. of not uh, being afraid of the dark and it's just a really it's a really cool study uh, into that it's not scary or anything like that but it is a really neat study friday april 16th at 6 p.m and saturday april 17th at both 1 p.m and 6 p.m so we have four performances with two on saturday because we wanted masks that could show our facial expressions we got these ones that um fit on our face but they're like these uh they're, they're clear here and just have a very thin strip of fabric here. Uh, but the problem is they muffle your voice really, really badly. Matt Hamlin, of course, is the sound engineer. He's, uh, he's been struggling with that. The actors have been struggling to speak loud enough and to speak clearly enough so we can hear them. So that's been a problem. But, of course, it's good because we're safe. You know, in theater, it's, it uh, imitates life. You know, and so we don't stay far apart um, in life. We, we get together. We touch, you know, each other, um, shake hands, etc. I think they've really uh, worked hard to stay safe. I feel like we still have been able to produce a really high quality show, um, even working around those barriers. My role is Rick and Ock Baynor. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. I study fear. COVID has forced us to wear these stupid masks. Um, they're really hard to breathe in. And um, they've made it so that we can't be more than or less than six feet together on stage. At first, I didn't know if it would be enough practice, but now I definitely feel we definitely have enough practice because everyone's very confident in their roles, everyone knows where they're going, what they're doing, and why they're doing it. 
and we can fix things whenever problems do arise. And I play two different parts. My first part, I enter in as a lawyer to defend a accused man in a court of law. And my second part, I play the deputy. I play Efren Salas, he's a firefighter, and uh, yeah. I play Ensemble 5, the fifth and final ensemble. We've been practicing four times a week since January, and they started out, practice is about an hour and a half long, but now they're going to up to like three hours long. I'm Bryce Gay from Ob TV. That was the rehearsals from Drama Club of the play Trap. You can get tickets for the play online at thelyric.org. To the cast, break a leg. Well, that's going to be all for this edition of the H-Town Rundown. I'm Nick Thiel. And I'm Gabe Graham. And, and we'll, we'll be, be seeing you.